Well, welcome back to the When I Heard This Podcast. My name is Nate Robinson. I'm here with Pastor Joseph Tillman, MD of Soon to Be Demon. How are you doing today, sir? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. Cool. Oh, yeah, I really am. Great. I, I think so, too. I think this is how the beginning of every episode goes. It it was, yeah, mostly. It's you saying, I'm good, and then I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what you want from me, man. I don't either. Yeah. More therapy. That's what that's, I want. That's what we, that's what we all need, actually. actually. Therapy this time. Yes. Just therapy. N- not not counseling. No. Just therapy. Counseling's lame. <laughs> Therapy's well, where it's at, I, yo. <laughs> it sounds cooler. Yeah. Yeah. Even it though sounds some, more professional. Instead. Even though sometimes yeah. they're used interchangeably. Because counseling could be a part of everything. Um, yeah. Yeah. Counselor like is a pretty... Job counseling or... Right. It's a pretty generic word. Yeah. Yeah. Dumb. But therapies today. <laughs> therapy. <laughs> All right, they both had their place, but hopefully they listened to the last episode. Yes. Yeah. And if not, go listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It is really good. No, it was very, very good. Uh, it was. We we even had a therapist reach out to us. A counselor. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Either way. And <laughs> it's like, you see, I've heard it both ways. Uh, mm-hmm. And so they, uh, yeah, they liked it. Yeah. Yeah, but they're, but they're a licensed counselor and they, they said the episode licensed. was great. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they're a licensed counselor. They said it was great. Okay. Well, I'm going to try to make sure they hate this one then. <laughs> right. That's what you're after? Yeah. We're turning people off now from what was our their episodes. Name? I'm not saying <laughs> for sure. We just rip into them personally. Yeah. Let's not do that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm saying thank you to them for reaching out. Oh, yeah. Me too. Okay. Well, are you? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And But now that you've said thank you, you're going to. Yes. Rip into it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fine. I don't know their name, though, so. Right. Yeah, we'll keep it that way. It'll be generic. Towards all therapists. <laughs> Why would you do that? What? All therapists aren't bad. Why are you going to be ripping on therapists? All therapists <laughs> aren't. <laughs> there's, some, there's some really good therapists out You're there. confusing me. <laughs> you need therapy. So. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe. No. All right. Okay. I went to college. I could have studied therapy. You could have. And I didn't. Right. So I think I'm okay. <laughs> okay. We'll go to Patreon. $5. <laughs> like, subscribe, share, comment, follow, download. You can follow the podcast on Facebook and Instagram at When I Heard This Podcast and X and Locals at When I Heard This. Ring the notification bell. Go to the website where there's t-shirts and tell everyone that you know about the show. Yep. All right. Therapy. Yes, sir. What is therapy? All right. So therapy is also often um, the another synonym for it is psychotherapy. Okay. So to to make sure it's specific to the type of therapy we're talking about. Okay. Um, so in other words, not physical therapy, right? We're dealing with psychotherapy here. And so Webster defines psychotherapy as treatment of mental or emotional disorder or of related bodily ills by psychological means. Okay. So that's so we're dealing with mental, emotional. What does that mean disorders. to stupid people? Okay. <laughs> so th- psychotherapists are are helping individuals that have mental or emotional disorders or traumas or behaviors that are deriving from mental or emotional disorders or um, behavior disorders or maybe even physical illnesses that are actually derived from emotional or mental disorders. Okay. And I'm using the word disorder because it's there in the definition, but I don't want to come across as if like everything is a severe disorder that therapists are dealing with. So I would probably want to say it's more of mental or emotional. um, I don't know if I want to use the phrase issue or word issues, um, but it doesn't have to be like this extreme like disorder where it has been diagnosed, labeled as such, and that's what you're dealing with. Psychotherapists deal with a, a, a large gamut of mental and emotional things that derive from things like grief or trauma or loss um, or even just, you know, dealing with marriages that aren't, you know, you have family therapists, marriage, you know, therapists. So it could be that, you know, couples are not getting along, having a hard time with, you know, uh, their children. So all of those things can fall into this world of therapy. Okay. Yeah. I think that was the longest definition clip that we've had in a while. 
Absolutely, it was. Wow. Yeah. Good job. You're welcome. Congratulations. <laughs> You're welcome. That was all you. Uh, that was. That was. I'll. I'll try to do better going forward with doing definitions like that. Well, you did better this time. That's what I'm saying. Already. I'll try to continue to expand these definitions. Okay. Yep. As compared to counseling, mm -hmm. what types of issues does therapy address? Okay. And again, we've said this last week. So many times the word counselor and therapist become synonymous with one another. Mm -hmm. So even therapists or even counselors will refer to themselves as a counselor, as a therapist. Like it goes it can go either way. Um, now, in some states, you've got like actual like licensed counselors or licensed therapists where it, it's specific based upon what your degree was in. So it's kind of like how criminal and politician are basically the same thing. Spot on. Okay. Couldn't have said it better myself. And it, you can use them interchangeably. <laughs> exactly. <Okay>. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so, but so a counselor, it, you know, we said last time, sometimes people will use the word counselor to deal with like the counselor is dealing with like specific issues. And so it's a specific issue that is usually for a short period of time that okay. they're going to be working with someone through something. So again, you can have, you know, family counseling, marriage counseling, um, they can be dealing with grief, um, and even some mental health issues. But then therapists are going to be dealing with the same types of things. So you'll have family therapists, marriage therapists, um, you know, the mental health therapists, uh, grief therapists. Um, heck, there's even sex therapists out there. So therapy that is dealing with all those things, but often therapy is not just going to be for just that specific issue for a short period of time. It's going to be delving into like often mental health issues that derive from childhood trauma, from abuse. Um, and, but you, it doesn't always have to be like that extreme. It could be an individual that lost a loved one or lost a child and that could be trauma, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but obviously not childhood trauma, but you, you lost a child, you lost a spouse and you're just, you know, it's been, you know, three to five years and you're still just in that deep kind of place of sorrow and grief and depression. It just seems to just be there with you constantly. Then a therapist can help you process that and walk into a place of healing. So usually therapy is going to take a little bit longer and it's going to delve into often some deeper psychological things that are going on in individual. Okay. Yeah. And all those different types of therapy, do you think that all of that is legit and fine and cool? Like, I guess what I'm really yeah. asking is <laughs> as a Christian person, uh -huh. What do you think of sex therapy, basically? Uh, so I think if, again, I think all... Like, does that real, is that real? Is that does real? that need to exist? I think that, okay, this is what I would say okay. in, in relation to sex therapy, is that if there is someone that genuinely has an issue, that's having an issue with sex, okay? Okay. Then oftentimes that is a much deeper issue than just you know, we're not sexually compatible or those kind of things. It's a much, you know, so in other words, it's different. It, it's different than we're having, quote unquote, just trouble in the bedroom. It's, you know, an individual is actually really struggling with being able to not only want to have sex, but to enjoy sex. And that can stem from either sexual abuse that has been in their life um, okay. it can, but I'll also say this, it can actually stem not just from abuse sexually, it could stem from, you come from a very, um, you know, legalistic household where sex was portrayed as something that was not a good, but an evil. Okay. And so it's gotten kind of locked into your mind. Sex equals bad or sex equals sin. And so therefore, even though you're married and you know, as a Christian, all right, you're married, feel free, you know, enjoy sex, but it's like they can't flip that switch mm. and go from sex bad to, oh, sex is okay now. And so, and that is, that has been an issue. So, um, and I'm, by no means am I saying my wife and I are sex therapists, but we have had to walk through couples, like walk with couples through this. Through, and, through getting over that type of yeah, fear so, of 
stuff? Correct. Okay. So like, so for example, if someone was to come to me. So it's more than just put thing in thing and. Correct. Yeah. Okay. It's more than just like, you know, how do we have intercourse? Okay. Right. It's, um, you know, so for me, like if someone was to come to me and it's obvious that their issues in, in with sex derives from trauma or abuse, mm. then I'm going to refer them to professional. That's outside of my sphere. Okay? A sex therapist. Yeah. Or just a, to be honest with you, but often when you're dealing with that, it's just let's just That's get them a regular. Let's therapy. get them to a licensed therapist, okay. and let's let them help work through that trauma that they had as a child, as a teenager, whatever it may be, um, or even maybe they were they were raped as a young adult. You know, mm. um, all those things can be there. But if it's they're coming to us and it's clear that their issue is not from abuse, not from sexual assault or anything like that, but is actually Hey, we grew up in this really legalistic church, or even maybe they just heard it a certain way. You know, maybe the church wasn't legalistic, but their parents were, or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Um, then I feel completely comfortable, and so does my wife, talking with them through that and helping them to see a what we would call a healthy biblical sexual ethic. What is the difference between therapy and psychologist to pee? And psychiatrist to be. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not sure you said those words correctly, but okay. <laughs> therapist, psychologist, and psychiatrist. psychiatrist. Okay. So a licensed therapist, yes, a right, licensed therapist has a master's degree. Okay. And so, in, in, in this point, however, therapists don't have to be licensed, correct? That is correct. Okay. That's correct. And so that's why I'm saying a licensed therapist. Okay has to have a master's degree at minimal, right? But we talked about this even last yeah, yeah, yeah. last time. And like, so you have to go through a process of being licensed, mm-hmm. right? So even though you have your master's degree in psychotherapy or in some form of therapy, doesn't mean that you are licensed at that point. Right. You actually have to go through the process of being licensed by your state. So mm-hmm. licenses are given by the state, but all the states function under the same national umbrella. Okay, um, And so... Where a psychologist um, has their doctorate. So they have more than their master's. So that's more than that? That's correct. So it's more yeah. than a master's. So they've got their um, their PhD. Um, and, okay. Or they may call it a psych D, depending on the uh, where you're at or what degree you get. And so, um, and so th- these individual psychologists can officially diagnose people with m- mental health disorders. Okay. So a licensed therapist can, you know, obviously talk with people, do therapy, but a psychologist is actually able to give an official diagnosis. Okay. Okay? And psychologists do both clinical therapy and research. Or they can't, they don't have to do both. Okay. But they can do one or the other, or some do both. Whereas... What are you researching? So... You may, so you're probably, if you're, if you're researching as a psychologist, then you're generally working for either a university or you're working for the government and you are seeking to understand, you know, um, emotional behavioral patterns. Um, even, even things like genetics are brought up within, um, okay. you know, the way people, uh, act and do. Um, and so the crazy gene. <laughs> Yeah, I guess if you want to call it that. So, um, you know, but there, in, in when you're doing research, and it's it's like this with any kind of doctoral research. Um, you know, even for me, you know, getting my doctorate, you're designing an experiment, mm-hmm. right? You're collecting data, and then you've got to analyze that data. You're almost a doctor. I am, dude. I'm getting really close. It's crazy. I know. Um, so you're collecting that data, you're analyzing the data, and then you're going to end up publishing your findings. Okay. So for most psychologists, that means being published in an academic journal. Everyone's crazy. (laughs) Well, if that somehow becomes your conclusion, there is no normal. (laughs) Uh, That might be somewhat true. Normal equals crazy. (laughs) Yeah. And so, um, and then your psychiatrist is a different level of doctorate. So they actually have an MD. And so they're actually able to diagnose and then prescribe medicines. Okay. Um, yeah. So and, therapists, and, counselors, and therapists just talk to you. Correct. Therapists talk to you longer. 
generally speaking, that can be the way you can just yeah. Make, okay. If you want, if you want to try to create a differentiation between a counselor and a therapist, yeah, you can say a therapist often will talk longer and deal with more what I would call serious, um, you know, serious mental health. Longer, issues. yeah, longer yeah. meaning as long as possible, so I continue making a salary. <laughs> I did not and say then... that. All right, and 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 and, and I'll be honest. So most licensed to, to make a distinction too, most licensed counselors and licensed therapists are doing pretty similar stuff. Okay, it's the counselors that aren't licensed that are doing these kind of like niche things. Okay, more often than not, yeah. So anyway, go ahead. Okay, and then psychologists. Uh huh. Try to talk to you forever so they can make a good salary, but they also do research they in can. labs. They can do research, uh huh. And then psychiatrists, well, and not just in labs, right? Because they're having to deal. Oh, with in people. the field, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. And then psychiatrists are the ultimate ones <laughs> who can talk to you forever, <laughs> right? And then also give you drugs. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Yes. All right. You got it. You so got why it. does why doesn't everyone go to a psychiatrist so they can get drugs? <laughs> yeah. Well, one, there just simply wouldn't be enough. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're, there wouldn't be enough psychiatrists to see everybody. Okay. Um, and then yeah, I think there there's already like there, in our country at least there's a discussion of like yeah we have a shortage of mental health counselors and experts, um, and so we actually need more. Um, I wonder what the record is for how quickly someone could start seeing a therapist uh -huh. or start seeing a counselor, an right. unlicensed counselor, <laughs> right, to getting anxiety medicine. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to do it. All right. You'll see how fast you can move? Yeah. How I bet many... you I can do it in two days. <laughs> how many hoops you got to jump, yeah. jump through? Yeah. Uh, okay. You just have to come in late. <laughs> like i'm so sorry oh no you know what i mean <laughs> all right let me know how that you right. do that let me know how it plays out all right i'm gonna put it on youtube oh, no. <laughs> okay you can yeah. do that too yeah yeah okay so some of these questions you can go see the counseling episode to get because we sort of talked about therapy and counseling and some of those same Right. Questions? Yeah. And so go to that one. But this is the question I want to ask you next. So now we're getting into it and you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yay. All right. So Christian therapy or Christian counseling versus uh -huh. non-Christian counseling. Uh-huh. Okay. So if a non-Christian person... Okay. Came up to you and said, hey, mm -hmm. I'm considering therapy. Right. And you were going to tell them who you thought they should see. Uh-huh. Would you recommend a non-Christian person see mm -hmm. a non-Christian therapist since their worldviews align? Mm -hmm. Or would you recommend a non-Christian person go to a Christian therapist? Because okay. you're a Christian and you want to make them be Christian okay. while, all, while also getting them help. Okay. Well, there's no guarantee that two non-Christian people will have the same worldview to begin with. True. So I don't think that's part of the equation. Okay. Okay. Um, and But <clears throat> obviously as a Christian. Yes. And one who holds a Christian worldview. I would. I, I personally would like everyone to see a Christian counselor. Right. Not that I'm saying that every non-Christian counselor is bad by okay. any means, but what I do know is again, therapist, but yeah, therapist. It's getting down to the idea of well, what are you know? If you're talking to someone, what they believe about morality, what mm -hmm. they believe about identity, what they believe about truth and purpose, all of those things would matter to me in talking with a therapist. Okay. So therefore, I would, me, I'd recommend someone that I felt like would have a truthful worldview on purpose and morality and identity. But how is that not you trying to like, like if I'm, if I'm a non-Christian person dealing with a thing, right, and I need to see a therapist, right? Why am I having to convert 
to a religion <laughs> in the process. Yeah, no, but you're not having to convert to a religion. I'm not even talking about religion, right? I'm just talking about a worldview. There's a lot of people that are not Christian that that hold p parts, at least, of Christian worldviews. So you have individuals that would say that they are, you know, that they hold to a good, you know, they have good morals or they're a good moral person. So they may not even be a follower of Jesus, but they may have used Christianity to help inform what morality is for them. Okay. And so that's where I guess for me, if you're going to talk to someone and you're talking about whether it's dealing with a spouse or dealing with your kids or even dealing with grief, all of those things to me, I think are you you find it better when it's dealing with it when you're dealing with those things in the context of a worldview that I would believe to be true, right? Okay. Because again, they're gonna view they're gonna see marriage through a lens that I believe to be truthful. They're gonna see raising kids or dealing with grief in a way that I believe to be truthful because of their worldview. Um, and so that's why I would recommend it. And I have no problem saying that. And I'm not saying if they go to a non-Christian therapist, that they're going to receive terrible counsel. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that I know hope that I know that, you know, because of the Christian counselors that I know around this area, Hey, I can recommend you to one. And I know they're going to give you good, solid, you know, um, counseling and therapy and yeah, and it's going to come from a Christian worldview. So okay, again, if I don't think it has to be religion, you have to be, you know convert. Because I know that there's non-Christian people that if I ask them to go to a therapist, they'd be like, "Hey, definitely do not go to a Christian because they won't help you. Mm -hmm. They'll just push you toward Christianity and make that the fix." Okay. Yeah, and I think that would be an incorrect view of the way that Christian therapists handle their clients. Is it though? Yeah, yeah. I don't think they're okay. always going to push you toward God. I think they're going to push you toward what they believe to be truth, and they're which gonna, is God, <laughs> which obviously is rooted in God. And but but even things like AA are appealing to a higher power, right? Okay. And and is that so therapy. It's well, it's group counseling, okay. right? Okay. And um and so so I think that. You know, and and again, originally it wasn't even just higher power, right? It was actually I thought AA God. was a cult. <laughs> no, like Alcohol Anonymous. Yeah, or yeah, no, AA is not a cult. But they want NA's, you to be anonymous. <laughs> That's kind of culty. <laughs> yeah, but they're not hiding. See, they don't believe they're they're not like a cult that believes that they have these secrets of knowledge or secrets about God that only they know. That they're not going to share with everybody else. They might. <laughs> But they have don't, you been to one? They don't. <laughs> no. I've never been to an AA meeting. Okay. No. No. But I've got really good friends that go to AA meetings. So. All right. Yeah. But. <laughs> but. <laughs> so, no, I think. So, your friends are in cults. Is what you're <laughs> <laughs> no, They're not in cults. Okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> what is a higher power? It's kind of culty language. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a way to refer to obviously a divine being without having to straight up straight up just say God because somehow that's become offensive. But what's kind of interesting is so many AA meetings or NA meetings actually meet in churches. Yeah. So you're you're like you kind of know okay like that's what they're referring to. So, All I know is whenever you drive by an AA meeting, they're all outside smoking. <laughs> that's that has been your scientific research yes <laughs> it's like they switched the sauce for yeah. cigarettes or they always did cigarettes while they were drinking and right now they're just like this is all i have <laughs> hey man i have to do this every day now hey man, one demon all at, the time <laughs> one demon at a time right <laughs> so um but no so yeah and again i don't want to come across like non-christian you know, therapists, again, are all bad, are going to leave people just horribly astray. I'm not saying that. But I just I just know, for Christian counselors that I know, that what they're going to offer. And yeah, and some of them may talk to them about God and talk to them about how God can be part of their healing journey. So, Okay, so next question. Uh -huh. Or 
Maybe not the next question. Okay. All right. Non-Christians. Uh-huh. For, this is from you, a Christian person. Okay. All right. Non-Christians going to non-Christian therapy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does it, does it work? Sure it can work. Yeah. Okay. Sure it can work. But Absolutely. they don't have God. And they You're don't right. have the right worldview. So how well, right. how are how's yeah. that? Yeah. Well, uh, again, I'm not saying it can't work. Right. Okay. Because when you're dealing with things like um, trauma, mm-hmm. abuse, right? Like there are, there are, even things like it doesn't have to be like that that extreme, like anxiety. You know, okay. Um, there are there are counseling techniques and counseling methods that very much can help an individual process their trauma or process their feelings of anxiety process why they may be having you know if they're having panic attacks there's you know and help you move through that like i've got a book you know it's a good size book on anxiety and on my bookshelf okay. it's written from a non-christian from a non-christian perspective and it has been an incredible resource in helping for me as a pastor and helping counsel individuals that deal with anxiety okay and so no there's a lot of there's a lot of great, and I would say this, like, you know, so for example, when I was an undergrad. Is anxiety real? Oh, 100%. Are we sure? 100%. But if everyone has it, then is it real? Or is it just normal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not everyone has, not everyone has the anxiety where they are constantly feeling a fight or flight feeling in their body. And that's okay. what you're talking about with anxiety. Like where it's this, you know, anxiety is this this part where you it's like fight or flight, fight or flight, and it's like adrenaline rushes, right? Okay. And so, and it's usually triggered by it could be as simple as a smell, or it could be a memory, or it could be a, something that's just you know reminds you of something. But individuals that are constantly dealing with anxiety, constantly dealing with like their fight or flight adrenaline rushes that they're having. And maybe they feel like they're on the edge like every day. Like that's real for people. And so, yeah, anxiety is absolutely real. Okay, fine. But it seems like everybody I, has it now. I, I, and, okay. And, and in fairness, I don't think you're necessarily wrong about the way that word has begun to be just thrown about. Okay. Like, I'm anxious. Okay, well, you're anxious in the moment, but that doesn't mean you're living as an anxious person, right? I think that's a big okay. distinction. Like, yes, every one of us probably experiences moments of anxiety, okay? But that's very different than living with anxiety. It's like depression. Every one of us have moments where we feel really down and and, and we want to isolate and those kind of things. But that's very different than having a moment like that or just a period like that versus, you know, a, 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 I'm living that way. So, no, I think those things are real. Well, all right. So trying not to offend anyone. <laughs> I'm just yeah. asking questions. I, I know. I know you're just asking because questions. Because it seems like everyone and their grand sister has anxiety now. <laughs> their grand sisters? Whatever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. No, but I, I, but I think... I, and that's what I'm saying. I think a, a lot of people begin to use words. They become common in our language mm-hmm. when they used to mean very specific things. Yes. First, and so yes, I do agree that there are people that put that use that word like they they they've diagnosed themselves or they labeled yes. themselves as having. I'm, I've I've got anxiety. Mm-hmm. Okay, but okay, you might. But let's talk about what you mean when you say that. Mm. Um, non-Christian therapy. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And the fact that non-Christian therapists can actually do really yes. good work. Yes. Yeah, absolutely they can. Okay. Yeah, they can. They can Again, they're taught methods. They're taught procedures. I guess what I was going to say was when I was an undergrad, one of the things that, you know, when you're studying individuals like Freud and Erickson and others, one of the things you're walking away that I walked away from was like, man, a lot of their observations were really good. Mm. Like their observing of human behaviors and human interactions are really good. It was the conclusions that I found lacking. And okay. so 
And I think that's one of the things that for me, you know, a so you can go to a therapist and they can help identify the issue, the mm-hmm. observation, but then, all right, well then, but why is that there? And that conclusion may not always be the same that a licensed Christian therapist may derive to, or it might okay. be. Um, or even if the conclusion is like, oh, we agree of why it's there. Now, how do we deal with it? Okay. What is the therapy going to actually look like and entail? That might be a little different. So, but it doesn't mean that a non therapist can't help people or a non Christian therapist, excuse me, can't help people. All right. So give me the answer that I'm looking for. What is the answer that you're looking for, Nate? (laughs) What do you think about non Christian therapy? Okay. What do I think about it? Give me the actual answer. Not the some of them are really good. Give me the. (laughs) What are the bad ones doing? Answer. <laughs> okay. What are all right? So like, what are the what are the bad ones doing? Non Christians go into bad non Christian right. therapists. Right. What's happening? Man, tell me. Do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um. Okay. You're right. I do sit here and say that some are good and no, no, no. Um. There. I do have an issue with how quickly therapists diagnose individuals. Okay. Again, I'm not saying all therapists do this. I'm just saying that there are some that you can go in and one day they're, they're, they're diagnosing you with something. Um, and that may or may not be true. And okay. I think that takes time. Um, but I guess the issue that I've got with therapists probably at at large is diagnosing kids or children too quickly. Um, okay. That's, that's an issue for me. So for example, you got a hyperactive kid. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it is easy to label that child as having ADHD. Yep. And, but if you label that child, there's a word for every behavior. In therapy yes. Now. Yes. And I, I guess that's what I'm getting. And a medicine for and it. And a medicine for it. And I guess that's what I'm getting to was that, is that there is, like, we are so quick to label people that don't fit within a specific box. And you think non-Christian therapists are doing this more than Christian therapists? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know if they're doing it. I I would sit here and go, man, I hope Christian therapists aren't doing this as much, but it probably is happening as well. Um, Just how quickly they're doing it. Uh, That would be a... That would be a great question to ask individuals that run in both circles. You know, like, because yeah. they have an overlap. Uh, that'd be a great question to ask someone. Do you know someone else I could talk to? Yeah, absolutely I do. Well, I want to talk to him. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Because um, uh, this is a thing that is... All these topics that we're doing... Right. Man, I really hate it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> This is just yeah. this is the worst of life yeah. to me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And okay, why is it the worst of life to you? I want to hear what you guys say. Do I have to Okay. <laughs> <sighs> um I just think most of it's BS. Okay. And I think exactly what you just said that people are like that's why I said I want to do the, the, the thing where I go see how fast I can get on anxiety medicine because I right. feel like I could do it in five minutes mm. and I'd be out of there with a prescription. And I think that's it, with a diagnosis and a prescription. And I think that's fucked up. <laughs> like, to, I mean, honestly, I think yeah. that's really stupid. Yeah. Uh, and, and and I agree. Uh, like that. I, yes. And I don't I don't understand. Like. Like all the conspiracy theories about big pharma trying to make people crazy and make people think they're crazy. Mm-hmm. It feels like the the therapy industry is the industry that is convincing people they're crazy when they're not to sell drugs mm. and to sell their own services. And it feels like it's so easy for these people to to do that instead of be one of the good ones that yeah. more of them go that direction for money instead of be good ones. And Mm. that's why I don't like the industry as a whole. Yeah. And maybe that's a little bit conspiratorial, but I don't think it is. I think that's human nature 
to sure. go toward the easy evil option instead of the good hard one and be a an outed person in your in your circles right. of therapists and counselors and try to do things the right way and that's why I would never go to one. Mm. I will never go to therapy because I don't know what I'm getting into and I'm not about to spend hundreds of dollars on some yeah person that's just trying to get me on drugs as quickly as possible and keep me around for as long as possible and right. never fix my problems. Right. I'd rather just sit here and try to and put up with them or or deal with it myself. Yeah. And no, and I would 100% agree with everything you're just saying. Okay. In the sense that I agree with you. Like that's what I'm saying like <laughs> that's why I I kept cuz there cuz there is a need for therapy. Like there are people that genuinely need yes. therapists. Like the one thing that you said last week about mm whatever you said last week when I agree with you <laughs> that, <laughs> that thing yeah, yeah that yeah I think there are like people with like like actually yes like people who actually went through a trauma right but the problem is if you actually went through a trauma and you go try to see a therapist you don't know if they're going to tell you that you need to to feel terrible about that forever and here's drugs stay on these drugs forever right. you're always going to be like this you're always going to need these drugs correct and that's the risk you run but by going to therapy yeah it is and that's why i also say that for me right for me i have counselors that i recommend mm -hmm. that i know won't do that right right and i and i will say this though i do i also know christian counselors that like there's not an end goal in sight for them. In other words, if you start therapy with them, they just want to keep you coming. Right. I do know that happens. And so, but for me, the best counselors are what you're talking about. They're like, all right, we want to help you. Mm -hmm. We do not want to be your therapist forever. Right. Right. We don't want you to keep coming in here. Cause to me, if you're having to keep coming to that therapist, that therapist is not doing their job well. Right. But for me to get to the point where I figure out that they either don't want me there forever or want yeah. me there forever is 10 sessions later. And I've already spent $5,000. <laughs> well, not 5,000. You know what I'm but, saying? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, and I say that, but I mean, you literally, if you did 10 sessions, depending on who you were seeing, yes. you're spending between 500 to 1,000. Yes. You are spending that much. And, you know, depending on what your insurance so I've covers spent or not, that much money or not covers. And, yeah. and now I'm like, oh, they're probably just going to keep me here forever. Yeah. And that is a risk you run. I'm yeah. not going to lie. And, and, and I I'm think sorry to say it, but there's dumber people in this world out there than me <laughs> that are getting roped into it. Uh, and, and I don't hundred percent. Right. A hundred percent. And no, so I, I don't disagree with you. This on is that. my problem with everything. This is uh, uh, with yeah, all the therapy. With all I get of it. it. And, and see, and it's so hard because I, I, because I do counseling. Yes. I do have to recommend people to therapists. Like I, I, I know how badly therapists are needed. I know that for a fact. Like I, the things that I hear would probably blow some people's minds. Mm -hmm. And, and there are therapists that are absolutely needed because they are trained to be able to help people whether it's walk through trauma, whether it's walk through grief or undealt with grief, like they're like they're uh, or abuse, um, anxieties, depressions, all that stuff. It, like there's legitimate cause for therapist and like, need yes. for therapist. But I do hear what you're saying because there is there there does seem to be like an organizational racket, if you will, in the therapy world. Where it is, come to us, and 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 I will say this too, not just come to us. We can give you money or get your money. I do think there can, the same way that clients can become codependent on their therapist, because it happens where clients become codependent on their therapist. Right. Therapists can also become codependent on their clients. Right, and that's like and, the, that's like the deepest form of it. Like, right, and like you can't live without, without me, me anymore. Yeah, and it's a huge savior complex, right? Yes, and and so in in the best situations, you you as a counselor, like they're are you as a counselor. This is kind of crazy, but listen to this. Like the best situation, and some states require this. You as a counselor, you must go see another counselor at least once a month. 
share with them what's going on in your practice. And hopefully that person can objectively tell you, like, I hear you. See, it may be time to let this person go, right? Like, yeah. hopefully they will catch on to some of those things mm-hmm. and call you on it. It's just a lot of work people have to do, therapists have to do, in order to be good ones. And, I, and it's so easy to be a terrible one. Yeah, I, I don't... Well, it is. It is easy to be a quote-unquote terrible one, especially when meds get involved. Yes. And the and and so, therefore, that therapist is needed to continue to... They have to, you know, rec- they have to refill those meds. Therefore, those patients have to see them for them to get refills and da da da. Right? Um, and so it can become this cycle. But I- again, that's why, and so I get I get conflicted, right? Yeah. Because I've seen the horror. I do not. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but I've seen like the horror of it, like where you know where kids are labeled at a really early age with having you know, this disorder or whatever. And lo and behold, they went through adolescence and puberty. Right. And guess what? They're fine. They're fine. Right. They never needed it to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, I mean, and I guess most extreme cases we're seeing nowadays. And what are these things doing to their brain development? And I think that's a huge thing. Right. And that's part of what psychologists are supposed to be studying that. Right. Right. What are the meds doing to impact the development of children's brains. And I don't know, I don't know one, if we're being honest with the findings and then two, if we even have a long enough runway of that yet on some of these meds. And And, and so so I'm, I'm a moron. This is just what I think. Okay. (laughs) Okay. This is just my opinion on this, on the, on all this stuff. You can have, you know, yeah. Don't get mad at me. I'm just stating an opinion. I get you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't usually give my opinion on the show. I know. And so, but yeah, but I hate this. I hate this so much. I know. I think all this is just such crap. <laughs> like, I just. I know. I, I know you do. And and I guess and that's where like for me, it's like. But I've seen the. I have seen the benefits of it. Right. Yes. Witnessed it firsthand with people in their lives, and so I know the need of good counseling and good therapists, and and so and I think maybe it'd be it would be intriguing. But I but I think about it in terms of if all of it went away, would okay. society be better off or worse? Mm. And that's how I think about it. Yeah. Because if the whole industry disappeared and there was no such thing as a counselor or a therapist or whatever. Right. And you did that with friends and people you trust and talk to them about yeah. your, your stuff. And there was, you know what I mean? I just. Right. Like, yeah, I think so. Unless, so here's the thing. I think we went from I think we went from a culture. Yeah, obviously they didn't have like counselors or psychologists or therapists, right. and and but then nothing was ever dealt with, right? Right. Mental health disorders and issues were never diagnosed that were real, right? And we were giving people lobotomies who right so sneeze we, too often, right? So we went crazy on that end because we didn't yeah. understand right psychological behaviors and emotional and mental states, right? Right. And so, so or, that's the state of nothing, right? That's the state of nothingness. <laughs> and you know, and like, so for me, being a family and child development major, for me, it was all about the development, right? right. The cognitive, physical developments of individuals um, with, you know, in relating to one another and in, and in relating to society as a whole. And so I like, so I'm glad, that's what I was saying. Like, like we don't want to go back here. Right. But it's almost like we've gone probably too far. Way too far. To where everyone needs to go see a counselor. And that's not the case, right? Every child needs to go see a counselor if they have the, slightest what we think is a developmental issue that's the other (sighs) why when reality is they don't they're kids let the kids let's see what it looks like on the other side of puberty right Mm -hmm. right um and 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 i will say to me this is like the worst state of therapy is when you when and here me being honest when we get into issues of therapists diagnosing and working with kids that are that maybe genuinely struggle with gender confusion or maybe oh. it's just a passing phase. Right. And but yet they're going to label them and diagnose them and right. oh you're trans or you're right. Yes. And all that stuff. Like, no, like what are we doing? 
Um, no, we do not need to be giving puberty blockers to kids, right? We do not need to be giving them medicines to help them transition. We do not need to mutilate their bodies. Let's let them get to the other side. You said it. I did it. We're, I did. I got no problem saying it. We're all the way here now. <laughs> let's get. I feel to- like it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's get to the other side of puberty and let's see where they're at, right? Because so much of this will, so much of this within a child is normal, and especially now. In other words, I say normal. Like it's so much. It's it's within a child to be like, well, I don't feel comfortable in my own body. Of course. A lot of kids don't feel comfortable in their own bodies growing up, right? Um, right. And for so lots of different for reasons. reasons. Correct. And so it's not, I just think we are overreacting and we're it's overdiagnosing. because they just got here. <laughs> yeah. And they just got their body. Right. Yeah. And they're trying to Maybe figure they don't it out. Know what the, they don't know what it's doing. Right. Like, yeah. And stupid. Y- right. And they'll and I and I and I'll hear that, well, but you have no idea the mental, you know, trauma and da, 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 the development of breast and da, da da da. Well, you know what? What's worse than that? Cutting them off. Yeah. And then realizing later on, oh, why the hell did I do that? Right. Well, because my counselor told me to. Maybe we've you talk about the, tra- you talk about the trauma that goes gonna... for for billions of years. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and you're and you're th- and no I one's mean, had a problem. I, I mean, you, you know the amount of therapy those kids are gonna need? Yes, and drugs and medical treatments and surgeries. Correct. And that's that's the that's the farthest end of the conspiracy that, theory. Correct. Correct. On all of this crap. On all of it. Yeah, and and it's and so because it's the most. It, yes, that's and and to me that's the that's what I was saying. That's the absolute worst part of it all. They get the most money out of one person as possible doing all this stuff to kids. Hundred percent, hundred percent. They do ever. Yeah, and that child will be trapped with them. Yeah. Or a counselor or a therapist, for, like you said, forever. You yep. know, um, and on drugs and in and out of hospitals and yes, can't do anything else with their life except right. try to stay alive. Well, well and, <laughs> and, 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 I, and I do think, unfortunately, this is what what we've created, right? And and so this is the what you're talking about. This is the extreme, horrible side of therapy. Yes, and what it's become. And so I agree that the nothingness was not good, but I but I also agree with you that the extreme side is n- definitely not good. I think this and, is worse. Oh, I do too. Uh, now I will say that I do too. Okay, I, I think this is worse. So we need to go back to nothing. <laughs> no more therapy. I just or drugs. Yeah, I just think, man, the, <laughs> get over your shit. Right. <laughs> well, it's like. It's like, yeah, I mean, the cat's out of the bag now. I'm half joking. I know. I know you are. But like the cat's out of the bag now. Like we got to deal. Yeah. And it's like with everything else, it's like, you know, you look at, you look at even like medical doctors, right? Like or healthcare. Like we need reform, right? We don't want to scrap the whole system, but we need a reform. Yeah. And it's the same thing, I think, within psychotherapy. Like it needs reform. Mm-hmm. You know, um, unfortunately, I think oftentimes we we are, the, the 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 psychotherapist, the psychologist, psychiatrist are pushing this further extreme, you know, yeah, and um and wanting to diagnose every little single thing, and be, and I'll say this too, because when you're go when you're when you're getting your doctorate, you have to offer something new to the field, okay, so like okay. when you're getting when you're doing your dissertation, you have to offer something new to the field. Why? It's just, it's part of dissertation work. Okay. And so, and, and so if you think about that and we've been doing psychology the way we've been doing it since the 20th century going forward, like you got to keep producing new things. So you just come up with some new crazy. I'm just saying. And, and, That's and, just, and, yeah. and, and it's like the crazy has what was crazy 50 years ago. Is no longer deemed as crazy, right? Right. We it's like we keep pushing that envelope of what is deemed, you know, a disorder or what is deemed not sane or what is deemed not healthy, and I, and and we go off on all of this stuff, and, and in the midst of it, I'm like, but I don't want people to lose me on this because some people are in therapy, they're listening to our podcast, and they're getting so much help, and I and I've said this before, like I see a therapist once a month. And it is for me to be able to go and to dump and to be able to process the things that I hear. Mm-hmm. But then also this therapist was huge for me when I was going through my pancreatitis and my own physical illnesses. Um, 
She helped our marriage in the midst of that. And not that we were having major marriage issues, but the caretaker or the caregiver, Melanie, my wife, she and and I, I mean, it's hard when you're giving when you're when you're giving uh, care to someone for four years with a chronic illness. And that's what she was having to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so and then I, you know, through the loss of my dad and helping me grieve through it. Um, and you know, so man, I am indebted to a therapist that I see on a regular basis. And I think she's just well, the how best, much do they charge? Best therapist in the world. So <laughs> how much do they charge? It's it's if worth, you're in debt to them. Well, you know what I mean. So um I'm I'm grateful I'm just, for that. I know you're just yeah, kidding. I I'm know. I know. I probably uh, need to we probably need to end this one pretty pro- soon. What, what are we at? 55? Yeah, we All right, one more thing I gotta say. Uh, okay. This is ahead. another one that makes me mad. Oh Lord. Okay, so every time this kind of goes with the question too. Okay. Every time I've said not said, people have told me I should get therapy before. Okay. And to me, it always seems like they don't like my opinion on something. Okay. So they want someone who's a professional to tell me the professional opinion I'm supposed to have on on war in the Middle East or some <laughs> crap. You know what I mean? And and like yeah. um there's that whole thing uh what's it, emotional intelligence uh-huh. which is basically it seems like a buzzword to be okay with trans people. Okay. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. Like and it's like it feels like all of this therapy is designed to change my opinion or worldview on something Mm -hmm. and that's when people tell me i need therapy i got you as if my opinion on something is a mental disorder right like what is happening with that yeah i mean that's none of that's okay you know in a most of the idea of like emotional intelligence right it's actually been around for a while okay and it's and and you're right that's maybe the form it's taken now is to go to this extreme place because that's apparently what we do. You know, emotional intelligence before was just how how empathetic, right? Are you are you to people, right? How much ability do you have to? What is your ability to emotionally be able to connect and relate with other people? Well, for me, it's zero. <laughs> right, and here's what I'm getting to: is individuals can have a low emotional intelligence. It doesn't mean that they need therapy. Okay. Okay. Like I think my emotional and not I think, but even through tests and assessments, like my emotional intelligence is pretty high. Well, that bodes well for me as a pastor. Yeah. Okay. Not everyone needs to have the 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 um, you know emotional intelligence that I have in their jobs and in their and in their life. Right. And so I don't think that that should be a bear, you know, a gauge, a barometer of if I need um, therapy or not. And we definitely shouldn't start saying, "Well, you're just you're ignorant. Go see a therapist." I think that's incredibly dangerous. Have you ever seen that happening? I haven't. Okay, I haven't had anyone ever say to me, "My opinion is this." It differs from other people. They're telling me to go see a therapist or should I go see a therapist? I, I haven't. Okay. Not until right now. All right. Yeah. Well, that's what... It's not like people flat out say anything. Right. But the way they talk about it, it's like, I have an opinion on something. And they're like, well, you need to see a therapist because... <laughs> yeah. Because the therapist will definitely sit there and make you change your opinion. And since you're stupid and the therapist went to school for it. Right. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you should listen to them and change your opinion. Yeah. I agree. And, and also here's drugs and yeah, pay me yeah, for I know. And we don't need all that stuff. And this is what I would say too. So as a Christian. Mm-hmm. So that's so, why I was asking you because yeah. I feel like that's happened to me the other way. Mm-hmm. Like with non-Christians telling me to okay. have non-Christian opinions. Right. And go see a therapist and right. get your non-Christian so, opinions. So when right. I'm asking you, why do you think, why would you send a non-Christian to Christian therapy? And it seems like the same thing. Okay. Yeah. And I don't like that. Even though that's fine. Well, I don't like any of it, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and, and and I think and I think for some people they don't need therapy, they don't need counseling. I, I do think that individuals just through just through basic discipleship, okay, meeting, talking, discussing scripture, 
uh, and discussing the heart of the Lord and praying together uh, through a long process, that can there can be so much transformation in in that, right? Okay. And that and I, so I think I think really healthy discipleship actually addresses some things that may come up in counseling, if you want to put it that way. That's what I want to ask you next time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we can kind of get into that. How and, much Jesus should I pour on my problems before right. I go see a therapist? Yeah. And I think that's a great, well, we can end it with, you know, saying that that's what we'll discuss next time because there is a way to view counseling and therapy in connection to following Jesus and praying and okay. reading the Bible and being with his people. So. so you can fix the industry with your Jesus stuff next time. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll give it my best shot to fix the whole industry in because one episode. It's all needs to go currently. <laughs> yeah, and then maybe we can get a counselor on with us. I want to do that. Okay. No, I need a licensed yeah. psychiatrist person to come so we can talk okay. the whole spectrum of everything. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll I'll see what I can find. Okay. Yeah. But anything you find is good. All right. Yeah, I've got. Yeah. I, I I I know I have licensed psychologists and therapists. So uh, I don't. I don't think I, I don't think I know any personally that are licensed or that are psychiatrists. Okay. Anyway, but maybe they know people. Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't know I was going to go on a whole rant. Right. But I'm glad I did it. <laughs> I know. I'm glad you did too. Because I think you're expressing the opinions that a lot of other people have too. Good. Yeah. And My kinda... turn. <laughs> <laughs> I've expressed opinions before. You have. I told you that this was going to be almost, that I was going to have as strong opinions of this as as Israel. It, yes. And I didn't I, know which one was going to be worse. I think this one's worse, This one's dude. definitely yeah. worse. <laughs> bar, bar none. <laughs> yeah, man. Except in the Israel episodes, I did not say that they should not exist. <laughs> this should not exist. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm glad there's a balance there, or not balance, but I'm glad you drew a line mm -hmm. where you said, you know. I can't good. wait for people to comment and be like, well, Nate needs therapy. He should go see my therapist. <laughs> you can unsubscribe. <laughs> no, don't. No. Please don't. <laughs> just don't follow Nate anymore on his yeah, own personal just don't account. Don't follow me on my personal stuff. But Joseph has good opinions, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, this will be a change. Usually, uh, I'm the one getting hammered every week. Yeah. So, uh, thank you. All right. Well, that's that's enough of that. All right. Yes, sir. That's enough of this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. <sighs> well, thank you for listening. You're very welcome. And you too. This has been the When I Heard This Podcast. You can follow the podcast on Facebook and Instagram at When I Heard This Podcast and X and Locals at When I Heard This. Go to Patreon, $5. Like, subscribe, share, comment, follow, download. You can go to the website where there's t-shirts. Tell everyone that you know about the show and ring the notification bell so you never miss more of this stuff. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Nate Robinsoff. And you can follow Joseph on Instagram at Rev Joe T. This has been the When I Heard This Podcast. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye.